Well, hello again, everybody. We're going to talk here about acute myelogenous leukemia, one of the more common leukemias that you'll run into. And uh, this is a big deal. So you want to pay attention here. This gets tested very frequently on your exam. All right. So if you haven't had the chance yet, please consider subscribing to my Patreon. You can get there by clicking the link in the description of the video or on the i button on the upper right hand corner. I very much appreciate all the contributions that I can get to help offset the cost of these videos. And I thank all those of you who have already donated. And definitely subscribe to my channel and you'll get notifications every time I put a new video up. Now this is the blood cancer family tree. Um, I'm not gonna go into this too much, but it helps to know that when you're dealing with mutations and proliferations of the early cell lines um, of, of cells early in their development, that's where you tend to deal with acute leukemias. If it's a mutation more down here, you tend to be dealing with the chronic leukemias and um, things like multiple myeloma. This is just an overview of acute leukemia. I go into this in the ALL section, uh, but remember that basically what's happening here is that you have one cell that mutates and proliferates like crazy. It crowds out the bone marrow, uses up all the resources, and as a consequence, you don't have the resources to make other things like red blood cells and platelets. And so what we see is an anemia and a thrombocytopenia. Now you can be dealing with a leukopenia or you could have leukocytosis in your CBC. It doesn't really matter though, because if you're making a ton of white cells and they're cancerous cells, they're not functioning. And so you're still going to really have a functional leukopenia. And so you'll have an increased susceptibility to infections just as you would if you were to really just have a leukopenia. And then you can see some other uh, signs as well related to uh, cancerous infiltration. And you can also see the so-called B symptoms like fatigue and night sweats and uh, weight loss and stuff like that. All right, um, now ALL is the most common in children. ALL is 75% of cases in children, uh, but AML is more common in adults and it will be about 25% of cases in children. Okay, so if you're dealing with a leukemic adult, you're probably dealing with AML, but we still have to make sure. This is the bone marrow biopsy. Um, I go into this in the AOL talk, but I, what I do want to point out, you've got to have more than 20% blasts on bone marrow biopsy. That's necessary to diagnose acute leukemia. With AOL, they'll stain positive for CALA and TDT. And with AML, you'll see in many cases, hour rods and myeloperoxidase. And I want to point out these hour rods, I don't have a picture, Basically what you're looking at is these little tiny rods uh, that look kind of like that inside the, uh, the cancerous cells. And these hour rods are full of granules that activate the coagulation system. And so if you see a patient with abundant hour rods, they're at high risk for developing DIC. Okay, so let's take a look at a vignette. We got a 53 year old guy coming into the clinic complaining of increased fatigue for the last three months. He also says he feels like he's been run over by a truck and is struggling with body aches and pains that come around the same time, came around the same time as the fatigue. He's got no chronic medical conditions, no medications, no substance use. He's otherwise healthy. Vitals are fine. He's lost 15 pounds since his last routine checkup six months ago. That's 7% of his initial body weight. Physical exam shows bruising on both legs, which he can't explain. Pale conjunctiva, tenderness to palpation over both legs, hips, and sternum, so bony tenderness. Liver and spleen not palpable, no palpable lymph nodes. Remainder of the exam is unremarkable. So go ahead and pause and look to see what stands out here. So what we're worried about here is the fact that he's got fatigue and weight loss. That sounds like cancer, okay? We're also concerned about the bruising because now what we're seeing here is there might be an anemia, there might be a thrombocytopenia, ergo, there may be a pancytopenia. And when you see pancytopenia, you really gotta be thinking of a leukemia. Um, so our differential is going to be a lot of hematologic malignancies or pre-malignancies, so AML, AOL, myelodysplastic syndrome, myelofibrosis, uh, reactive lymphocytosis, aplastic anemia, and immune thrombocytopenia. So this is our kind of general workup when we've got a patient coming in with a leukemic-like picture. We're gonna get a CBC with smear. That's the best initial test because you may see the blasts. BMP, PTPTT because of the bruising, liver function tests, LDH. Uh, and then he, uh, we 
may be dealing with a possibility of an infection here. Uh, we don't know, so it's going to be useful to get a blood culture, UA with culture, chest x-ray. Because he's not febrile, you may skip that, um, but I would include it um, anyway. And this is what we see. Okay, so we see an anemia, leukocytosis, thrombocytopenia. Immediately, you should be thinking AML uh, in this age and then positive blast. So we know we're dealing with an acute leukemia here. Therefore, the best next step is a bone marrow biopsy. Now, even if you didn't have all that and you were still thinking, eh, this really looks like leukemia, go ahead and get the bone marrow biopsy anyway. Um, so we're gonna get the biopsy and we see hypercellularity and 28% blast, satisfying acute leukemia, but what kind? Well, there's our rods present, AML, okay? Look no further. Cala, TDT are negative. MPO is positive. Um, by the way, I just want to point out, MPO, do you know another name for that? Pianca, which we look for in certain autoimmune disorders. All right, so we're going to admit this patient. We'll consult Hemonc. Uh, we need to transfuse him because he's very anemic. Uh, we'll re do reverse isolation because we don't want him to get infected. And then we'll counsel and reassure him. You will not be expected on CCS to start any kind of cancer medications. This was our differential. Uh, you can pause this if you want and take a look at why this didn't fit these differentials. AML is a heterogeneous group of hematologic neoplasms that are characterized by clonal proliferation of myeloblasts involving the peripheral blood and bone marrow. The incidence increases with age. The majority of these patients are elderly. However, it can happen at any age. It's not like ALL where we virtually never see it in adults or CML where we virtually never see it in young people. This can happen in any age. There's increased risk with exposure to cytotoxic or radiation. So think of former cancer patients. Maybe they had a uh, breast cancer. Maybe they had a lung cancer and they were treated and now they're developing these symptoms. You may think recurrence of their, uh, recurrence of their cancer or possibly a leukemia. There is also increased incidence with chromosomal abnormalities, Down syndrome, stuff like that. Uh, early symptoms are pretty nonspecific. B symptoms are very frequent in, in these patients. And one thing that kind of sets this apart from ALL is that they can have gingival involvement, which looks like gingival hyperplasia. Uh, that's not very sensitive, so I wouldn't rely on that, but it is one thing that does kind of set it apart from ALL. But the big thing that you're gonna look at is age. I mean, if you're dealing with a four-year-old with a leukemic picture, it's almost certainly ALL. If you're dealing with a, well, not almost certainly, but three times out of four, it's AOL. If you're dealing with an older patient, it's almost certainly AML. Best initial test, peripheral smear, often shows blasts. Bone marrow biopsy is most accurate. You need to have more than 20% blasts. You need to fit the AML picture, so our odds, MPO. Um, all patients who've been diagnosed with AML who have neurologic symptoms need to get a lumbar puncture with CSF and intrathecal cytarabine. Now, did you watch my ALL video? In ALL, we also do a lumbar puncture with CSF analysis. However, in ALL, we do it on everybody. In AML, we only do it if there's neurologic symptoms. In ALL, if we're doing a lumbar puncture, we give intrathecal methotrexate. In AML, we give intrathecal cytarabine. Um, so this is to determine whether there's CNS involvement. The neurologic symptoms that I'm talking about are meningitis-like. Um, and that can be complicated because sometimes these patients may actually have meningitis. I mean, they're immunocompromised. Um, so, you know, you if they do come in with these symptoms, you definitely want to send this off for culture and stuff like that. Um, and then... Um, the standard contraindications apply. Uh, for management, uh, for pretty much all AMLs, with one exception, we do IAC, iodorubicin and cytarabine. Now, there's one big exception, and that is the M3 AML, or uh, acute promyelocytic leukemia, APML. And the treatment there is ATRA, all transretinoic acid, and arsenic trioxide. So that is much different, and this you can be tested on. Chemotherapy is not commonly tested. When we're talking about chemotherapy coming up on the step, it's going to be adverse effects, or it's going to be um, something like this, where it's very classic, atra and arsenic trioxide for uh, APML. You, know, you can get tested on you know, some of the, uh, the non-Hodgkin's and Hodgkin's lymphomas. They do occasionally come up. They're kind of lower yield, though. 
Precise therapy, however, is going to be guided by cytogenetics, and that's why you're commonly not tested on this. Complications, leukostasis. Basically what happens, you get a ton of white cells, they get into your blood, and they sludge it up. Um, so look for uh, things like dyspnea, chest pain, headaches, altered mental status, um, and then you'll treat this accordingly. Chemo-related adverse effects, um, that's something that does get tested. So uh, cytosine or abinicide, also called cytarabine, um, or you may see it written as ERA-C, all the same thing. There are various side effects. You're not going to be expected to know those. Idorubicin, uh, like all the anthracyclines, um, can cause a dilated cardiomyopathy. Tumor lysis syndrome, we talked about that in ALL. You should go back and watch that if you haven't. DIC, particularly with M3 or APML, and remember that that's associated with the hour rods. And then there's complications related to the cytopenias, as we already talked about.